What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So nowadays, I feel like cloud storage is everywhere and everything we do online gets automatically uploaded or saved to some cloud storage device somewhere, whether we realize it or not. Pictures on our phone, files from our email, schoolwork, work, work, private messages, and even sensitive data and personal information. It's all stored in some magical, mystical cloud. And you likely use one or many different cloud storage options every single day. It may be a family iCloud account or Google Drive work account, or maybe you still use Dropbox for some reason, even though it's historically been one of the worst options. Every cloud storage service has its pros and cons. Pricing, security, ease of use, and depending on your specific needs, one might be better than the other. So in this video, I'm gonna compare the most popular cloud storage options that you may already be using, and also recommend a few alternatives that I think you should consider using in order to get more storage for the money if you're paying, and most importantly, better security for all your personal files and information on every device. So one of the best alternative cloud storage and file sharing solutions out there right now, in my opinion, is sync.com. They are a privacy first platform with the explicit goal of protecting your data. They're also more affordable than the likes of Dropbox for both personal and business use, and they offer a long list of features that allow for seamless uploads, edits, file transfers, security, and a whole lot more. As a file storage and file sharing hub, Sync allows you to easily upload all major file types from your favorite apps, including Adobe Creative Suite, Microsoft Office, and more, and share and collaborate with friends and colleagues on those files. You can access your files anywhere, PC, Mac, iPhone, Android, or via Sync's web portal. And you have offline access to everything as well. For personal security, Sync offers strong encryption and access control features, which means your files are protected from unauthorized access in the cloud. You can also set passwords, expiration dates, upload capabilities, email notifications, and set granular permissions like read only or remote wipe. And you also have complete oversight of everything going on with your Sync account with activity logs and notifications. Your files are also fully protected via Sync's backup and restore options. So if something goes horribly wrong, human error, a ransomware attack, or even a hardware failure, you can get back any file you might've lost within 365 days. And everything is backed up to a centralized location in real time. You can also set up Sync Vaults, a long-term storage option that serves as a full archive of all of your folders and files. Most importantly, Sync stands by its own backend security. Their platform and apps limit how much of your personal info that they can see, which means that you're a customer, not a product. Unlike Google, for example, that collects as much data as possible to monetize you. And from a pricing standpoint, Sync actually has a totally free option with five gigabytes of storage and basic sharing capabilities. So you can try it out with no obligation and no credit card required. Their basic individual plan with two terabytes of storage and all the sharing options is only $8 per month, but the real value actually is with their Teams Unlimited plan. For small businesses and teams, you get unlimited storage, custom portal branding, and more for $15 per month per user, which is way cheaper than Dropbox. Also consider that Google, Apple, and Microsoft don't even offer unlimited storage options. And Sync also delivers some solid customer support regardless of the account type you might have. So they're there to help if you need anything. If you're interested in trying out Sync, I'll leave a link down below in the video description. You can also head on over to sync.com slash techdaily to sign up and you'll get a nice discount too. I truly think they're the best cloud storage and file sharing alternative out there right now for both personal and business use. So specifically, for Apple users, iCloud continues to be one of the most popular and convenient quasi-cloud storage solutions that most people sort of 
unknowingly utilize, but obviously it's pretty useless outside an Apple device. iCloud in the more traditional sense is a storage add-on for your iPhone, iPad, or Mac. Most people use it to be able to just take more pictures or download more apps to their phone, but power users can absolutely take full advantage of the file sharing capabilities and non-storage features like iCloud Keychain for passwords. For collaborations, all your folders, files, images, and documents are synced seamlessly across all of your Apple devices. So you can edit a file on your iPhone and jump back into it on your iPad. iCloud provides that centralized location for everything so that every device can access it. But there's no revision history, for example, and not much in the way of file-specific security. There's different arms to the iCloud ecosystem that provide some additional features though, like iCloud Photos, for example, which can automatically back up the pictures and videos you take and save them on your Apple devices. And like I mentioned, there's iCloud Keychain, which stores all your passwords and credit card information securely. Again, making it easy to access them from any of your Apple devices. As far as security, Apple has continually touted themselves and their products as being the most secure in the industry. But let's be honest, I think some people are still uneasy from the celebrity iCloud hacks that happened a few years back. And Apple also seems to be the target of some consistent government scrutiny and intervention. Though in my experience with Apple's 2FA and device locking, iCloud accounts seem to be more secure than ever for the average everyday user. The biggest disadvantages with iCloud really stem from the fact that it's ecosystem specific. So if you have friends, family members, or coworkers that don't have an Apple device, all those great iCloud features and other iOS features like AirDrop are more or less useless. There's also very limited customer support. You can't really call up Apple if something goes wrong with your iCloud account, and a visit to the Apple store is hit or miss. And most importantly, the pricing options aren't really the best. You get five gigabytes free and up to two terabytes for $10 per month, but there's nothing beyond that. And all in all, the device-specific limitations, the lack of any pro features, really only make iCloud attractive for the everyday user who just needs some extra on-device storage for their iPhone. Google Drive, as part of a Google One subscription, has obviously been one of the most popular file sharing and cloud storage options in recent years for both personal and professional use. Of course, its main advantage is seamless integration with all things Google, Gmail, web-based file editing, Android device integration, and a whole lot more. And like iCloud, Google One offers other features like device backup and a VPN that can up the value if you take advantage of it. One of the first benefits of Google One is the pricing. Their cheapest plan is just $2 per month for 100 gigabytes of storage. For $10 a month, you get up to two terabytes once again and a handful of other features. And all that extra space can be used by any and all file types photos, folders, documents, regardless of you using Google's own docs or sheets or Microsoft Office, Adobe, or anything else on your computer. Obviously, it is helpful if you are a Google Power user. A Google One subscription plan increases your inbox storage, for example, and allows for all those files and documents you might edit via Google's web products to be easily shared and worked on by anyone else with a Gmail account. The other Google products, like Google Photos, also fall underneath your Google One subscription, and you can utilize this on your Android device or even your iPhone to back up and transfer any and all pictures and videos. For Android devices specifically, you can also utilize Google One to back up your entire device and restore it. And this is something no other third-party storage app offers. Google has also attempted to portray a privacy and security-focused image, which has received some mixed results. But generally speaking, their commitment to protecting user data via encryption, both during file upload and at rest, means that it's difficult for those files to be accessed by malicious actors. It just seems like Google knows everything everything about you. But more recently, we have seen a string of hacked Google accounts and stolen YouTube channels via some vulnerability in Gmail or Google Docs, so that's not great. There's also no real file backup or recovery option with Google One. You get a 30-day window with files in the trash, but that's pretty much it. And one of the biggest drawbacks to Google One is its reliance on an internet connection. While Google Drive offers an offline mode for editing and creating documents, you still need to access the web for a lot of the other features
features in Google products. I personally think Google One and Google Drive falls into the casual user category, similar to iCloud, but with a number of additional advantages. It's certainly great for personal use, school, work, small businesses, and its integration with Gmail and Google's other web-based products is super useful, but it's less of a true secure cloud storage system and more of an online hub for Word docs, photos, and emails. Microsoft's OneDrive is also a pretty popular option nowadays for school and for work. And if you're engulfed in the Microsoft or Windows ecosystem specifically, it might make sense. OneDrive had lagged behind even Google Drive and iCloud for a while, but more recently, Microsoft has kicked things up a notch and really made OneDrive quite competitive. OneDrive's biggest strength, of course, is its integration within Office 365, but OneDrive can also serve as an all-encompassing storage and file collaboration solution on everything from Windows PCs to Macs, Android, and even iOS devices, and Kindles and the Xbox too. Like the other products I mentioned, OneDrive automatically uploads files on your device to the cloud. If you have OneDrive installed on multiple devices, any changes made to those files or folders will sync across all of them. OneDrive's integration with other Microsoft products also allows for real-time collaborative editing, either from the desktop application or via the web products. OneDrive also has additional products within its subscription, like the Personal Vault, a protected area on OneDrive that's intended for super sensitive documents. Any file, folder, or video you place there will be protected with strong authentication or two-step identity verification, such as your fingerprint, face, pin, or a code sent to you via email or SMS. With pricing, you get five gigabytes free to use, and there's always various deals running for OneDrive when you buy a smartphone, for example, but its other packages range between $6.99 and $9.99 per month for up to six terabytes combined for up to six users. Unfortunately, the biggest drawback with OneDrive actually is with backend security. OneDrive doesn't offer zero knowledge encryption, where only you have access to the encryption key. Instead, for file transfers, OneDrive supports in transit and at rest AES 256 bit encryption. Essentially, OneDrive just holds a copy of your encryption key and has the ability to decrypt and access your files. This means that anyone who manages to breach OneDrive's security could theoretically read your files, and this could mean a potential data breach similar to what we've seen from Dropbox. Looking ahead, Microsoft has plans this year to redesign OneDrive's interface, offer offline web syncing, more sharing and collaboration options, file favoriting Teams integrations, and macOS desktop and document folder backup as well. With all of those additions, it's apparent that Microsoft is putting a ton of effort behind OneDrive in order to compete. And I do think they have a relatively compelling product now that at least outfeatures the likes of iCloud and Google Drive. But to me, their less than ideal security setup makes me stay away from OneDrive for now. All in all, while there are plenty of cloud-based storage and file sharing products out there, they're certainly not all equal. While iCloud may be perfect for iPhone users, it's pretty useless for anyone else. Google One is great for collaboration and seamless integration with Gmail, and Microsoft's OneDrive has certainly stepped up in recent years, though their security certainly needs to be scrutinized. To me, the best all-in-one solution for both features and security is Sync.com. It's a simple, easy-to-use cloud storage and file sharing platform that will be familiar to Dropbox users, but less bloated and much better with the pricing. And they offer more storage than Google, Microsoft, and Apple as well. But what do you guys think? What cloud storage solution do you personally use, if any? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.